In this video, we will be talking about a fully developed laminar flow within a uh, pipe. And we have defined the pipe as uh, a conduit or a duct that is first of all fully filled up and second, a pressure difference exists within this pipe. A pressure gradient exists within this pipe, which is the main driving force for the flow. Um, so in the previous lecture, we talked about how the flow in a long, straight, constant diameter pipe becomes fully developed after a certain entrance length, which is the entrance region flow. And one of the characteristics of this fully developed flow was that the velocity profile is uh, the same at any cross section of the pipe, right? And this is true whether the flow is laminar or turbulent, but uh, the details of the velocity profile, what this velocity profile is going to look like, whether it's going to be uh, parabolic or some other shape, uh, depends majorly on the fact if the flow is laminar or turbulent. So we begin by developing the equation for the velocity profile in a fully developed laminar flow. And we do this because the knowledge of uh, this velocity profile and what it looks like can lead us directly to other useful information, to finding out other useful information like, say, flow rate within the pipe or the pressure drop within the pipe and so on and so forth. But important things to remember here. There's some side notes that you should remember. Uh, first of all, most flows in real life are turbulent rather than laminar in nature. And most, if not many, of the pipes don't even allow the attainment of a fully developed flow because there's bends in the pipe, there's valves, and because of that, fully developed flow isn't even attained in the pipe. So why even study fully developed flow in the first place? And why specifically study fully developed laminar flow? So there's uh, reasons for that. First off, uh, a theoretical understanding of fully developed flow is important because uh, it can be carried out exactly. And what that means is you can find out the exact equations for uh, the fully developed flow. Uh, and it also then provides the foundation for more complicated analyses. Uh, and if the flow is not fully developed, say you're talking about the entrance reason flow or something, a theoretical analysis then becomes a lot more complex and it is not in the scope of the undergrad level of study. Also, why specifically fully developed laminar flow? Why not fully developed turbulent flow? Well, if the flow is turbulent, a detailed theoretical analysis is not even possible yet. So the uh, only thing that we are left with actually is fully developed laminar flow. and there's three ways of uh, studying fully developed laminar flow and deriving the results. So first is applying Newton's second law, F equals MA, directly to some kind of fluid element within this pipe. The second is through Navier-Stokes equations, and the third is through dimensional analysis methods. We will be focusing on Newton's second law uh, first off. So let's just dive into it. Let's just look at this pipe. Let's assume that we have a completely horizontal pipe that has a diameter d. And now we take a look at it in an expanded view. It's the same pipe. It's a horizontal pipe with a diameter d. And say we have this fluid element that is uh, within this uh, pipe now. Okay. So what you also have to remember is that this is the 2D view of the pipe. So in actuality, the pipe looks like this. It's cylindrical. And this fluid element within the pipe, it is also a cylindrical fluid element. Uh, sorry, okay. With circular cross sections on both sides here and here as well. Okay. So these are actually in 3D. This is what it's going to look like. And also remember that we are looking at this fluid element within uh, the fully developed flow region, which means that the velocity profile is going to remain constant throughout this flow. The way it looks like here, this is how it's going to look like anywhere uh, within this pipe now, within this fully developed flow region, okay? There's going to be no change. It's going to be exactly the same. But what you have to remember is that the velocity 
uh, is not uniform across the pipe section. And uh, what do we mean by that? Say you're looking at the cross section here, okay? So the velocity that you're going to have at, say, this point is going to be different from the velocity here or the velocity here or the velocity at the pipe wall, right? So you have maximum velocity here at the center line and the velocity keeps on decreasing on both sides towards the pipe wall. So velocity is not uniform across the pipe cross section. Fluid particles on the center line are moving faster than the ones that are closer to the wall. And because of that, what then happens is that this fluid element that you had here, this, let's say, this side of it, the particles that are at the center line here are moving faster. And the particles that are here are moving a lot slower. And because of that, say after some time has passed, after time delta t has passed, the shape of this fluid element, this initial fluid element, will change and it will become distorted at time t plus delta t. And because the particles at the center line have moved faster, uh, the particles on the sides are slower. So this is how the fluid element is going to become distorted. Now the shape of it is going to become distorted. Okay, is that understandable? Okay, but what we assume is that the flow is a steady state. And what that means is that the velocity is not changing with time. How do I explain that? Velocity, that was of the fluid particles that was here. The fluid, these fluid particles, when they reach here, they have the same velocity. When they reach here, they have the same velocity and so on and so forth. The velocity of the fluid particles that was here is the same that is here, and it's the same that is here, okay? So velocity is not changing with time, okay? Velocity is being indicated by u. So velocity is not changing with time. That means this derivative is equal to zero. And what that means is this is called local acceleration. So local acceleration is zero. And another thing, because the flow is fully developed, what that means is that the velocity is also not changing in the x direction. So what does that mean? Say if you had a pipe in which uh, the diameter was changing, the pipe diameter was changing like this. Now here, if I draw streamlines of the fluid, the velocity is changing in space, okay, in x. Velocity is changing in x. So, but when you have a constant um, cross-section pipe, the velocity doesn't change in the x direction. So, then what that means is that we have this derivative that is equal to zero as well. And this is called convective acceleration. Okay, so convective acceleration is equal to zero as well. So because the velocity profile is constant throughout, there's no change in velocity in the x direction as well. Okay, and another way to look at it is through these streamlines. They stay consistent. The particles are not crossing. The particles, these particles do not cross like this, or these particles do not cross like this. So because of that, because the particles stay consistent, they stay within their streamlines, the velocity doesn't change in the x-axis either. So now we have looked at two things. First, the, convect, uh, the local acceleration is zero and the convective acceleration is zero as well. So if we consider this fluid element now, and apply Newton's second law on it, which is basically going to be in the axial direction, fx equals max, because we're only looking at the axial direction and x-axis, we've already defined that the acceleration is zero. So that goes out the window. 
And uh, what we are left with is uh, the sum of forces equal to zero. The sum of forces in x direction equal to zero. So what we need to do is we need to apply the force balance on this fluid element. Uh, right? Okay. So we need to apply force balance on this fluid element. And this fluid element is at steady state in a fully developed flow in a horizontal pipe. Remember, it's a horizontal pipe, and we're only talking about Newtonian fluids. So over here, we have pressure building up, and we, uh, because we are applying force balance now, so we represent this pressure by P1. And where is this pressure being applied? It is being applied against this cross section and remember like we said this is actually a cylindrical element so what that means is we're looking at the area of a circle here against which this pressure force is interacting so p1 is interacting across this cross section so the force would be equal to because pressure is equal to force into uh, force divided by area, so force would be equal to pressure into area. So P1 is interacting with the area of the circle, which is pi r square, and then obviously there would be an equal, um, uh, sorry, there would be an, uh, a pressure force in the opposite direction too, which would basically be um, P2, right? So we have P2 here. Uh, but we know that a pressure difference needs to exist across this pipe, and usually uh, the pressure initially is greater than the final pressure. So from here, we can basically write P2 equal to P1 minus delta P. And this is across this cross section now so again it's going to be multiplied by the area of a circle and uh, what else do we have here okay the fluid element uh, there's also viscous forces and there are viscous stresses uh, because of the viscosity of the fluids uh, because, because of the viscosity of the fluid and that viscous stress is denoted by tau and it is happening um, in the opposite direction of the flow basically and this tau is basically a shear stress that is acting on the surface of the fluid so this tau is at interacting on this lateral surface of the cylinder and the area of a lateral surface of a cylinder is basically 2 pi into uh, the radius of the cylinder into the length of the cylinder. So that is what we've written down here. So we have uh, also we have the direction of these uh, force forces. And now um, what we can just do is we can uh, go ahead and write our force balance. So because this is in the positive x direction, so just we just write it like that. This is in the negative direction, negative x direction. So we have a negative sign here. Um, and then again, uh, the viscous stress, uh, tau 2 pi rl, is also in the negative x direction and it's being represented by a, a negative sign here. And all of this is equal to zero because obviously the acceleration was equal to zero. And this is what the force balance is for us. And now all we have to do is we simplify this equation. We divide this equation throughout by pi r squared. So these two cancel out. This cancels out as well. And basically, these cancel out. And what we are left with is um, this equation, right? Or we can simplify it and write, that, write it down in terms of um, uh, pressure drop per unit length.